Thank you for being here today at the Lansing Veterans Memorial in service of Veterans Day. Today, at this memorial, and all across our great land, we pay tribute to the service and sacrifice of our veterans. All those who followed our flag in war and peace, those who gave their lives, and those who came home. Each of us owes them a debt of gratitude we can never fully repay. The inscription on the Korean War Memorial says, freedom is not free. For more than two centuries, our armed forces have paid the price in defending our freedom and made our nation a beacon of hope for the world. Each of our American veterans comes from a different walk of life. They served our nations in different places and in different ways. Yet, all were united by love of country, belief in freedom, and their faith in America's future. As we commemorate this day of reverence and respect, let us also remember it is this unity of spirit that has guided our nation from its beginnings. Today, we pay homage to the unrelenting bravery and dedication that distinguish all of those who have earned the title American Veteran. It's an honor that only a small amount of Americans can claim, and one that marks those who are able to claim it as brothers and sisters. It is a badge of courage that unites across all ages, regardless of background, because to be a veteran is to have endured and survived challenges most Americans will never know. They have come through those trials and that testing and have braved dangers and deprivations face down the tragi tragic realities of war and death. And they've done it for us. They've done it for America. To defend and serve American values, to protect our country and our Constitution against all enemies, and to lay a stronger and more secure foundation on which future generations can continue to build a more perfect union. We call this a holiday. But for many veterans, it's another day of memories that drive them to live their lives each day the best they possibly can. For our troops, it's another day in harm's way. For their families, it's another day to feel the absence of a loved one and a concern for their safety. For our wounded warriors, it's another day of slow and arduous recovery. Carved into the marble at Arlington National Cemetery is an inscription that reads, when we assumed the soldier, we did not lay aside the citizen. Just as the contributions of our servicemen and women make this nation, that they make to this nation don't end when they take off their uniform, neither do our nation's obligations to them. Over a hundred years ago today, the battlefields of Europe fell white as World War II ended. But we don't mark this day each year as a celebration of victory, as proud of the victory as we were. We mark this day as a celebration for those who made the victory possible. It is a day we keep in our minds, the brave men and women of this nation, generations of them, who above all else established and believed and fought for a set of ideas. Because they did, our country still stands. Our founding principles still shine. Nations around the world that once knew nothing but fear now know the blessings of freedom. Once again, welcome to the Lansing Veterans Memorial in commemoration of Veterans Day. I've asked you all to rise for the presentation of colors.
pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. We would now like to present our nation's service song. Good afternoon and welcome to the Lansing Veterans Memorial here at the historic Lansing Airport. Uh, what a great day we got for this to, to, to commemorate women in the military, specifically women veterans today. We have a couple of speakers coming up that are going, going to speak to that very topic. Uh, the first of which happens to be the, the mayor of the village of Lansing here, uh, as well as an Army veteran. We're uh, proud to have her as part of our uh, organization of, of supporters. Uh, I'd like to bring to the stage uh, Lansing Mayor Patty Adams. Women have always had a role 
in the United States military. From those who followed the Continental Army, serving as washerwomen and tending to men, men's wounds, to Civil War nurses who presided over massive hospitals and worked to feed and clothe soldiers. During World War I, a few women who were not nurses were permitted to enlist in the armed forces during wartime. Most of those women served in a voluntary capacity. A select few were hired by military branches and put to work in clerical positions. 400,000 women served bravely in World War II, even becoming prisoners of war and receiving medals and citations for their contribution. But once the war ended, they found themselves jobless and unrecognized. They were not considered veterans. However, the endurance and efficiency of the women who served in the United States military during World War II convinced officials in all branches that it was worth employing women. In 1948, President Truman signed the Women's Armed Forces Act into law. The act let women serve as full, permanent members of all branches of the military. Women were finally able to serve their country as members of the United States forces during peacetime. But in reality, the act severely restricted their service. It limited the number of women who could serve to 2% of any military branch. The act also allowed the military to involuntarily discharge women who became pregnant, and it limited the number of women who could become officers. Discrimination reigned in all branches of the military, even at the beginning of the Vietnam War. In 1970, women were finally allowed to rise to command roles in non-combat units, and women and men began training together. In 2013, women achieved full status in the military when they were granted the right to serve in direct combat role zones. Across the armed forces, women make up 16% of active military today. Despite being overlooked, service women are forging new career paths for themselves and the next generation as they enter jobs that were once closed to them. Today, the United States has 44,000 women in its military, more than any other nation. I served in the United States Army in the Vietnam era. I was stationed in Germany as a military intelligence analyst with the 528 Military Intelligence Battalion. More than 50 years later, in October of 2021, I was privileged to be one of the 92 veterans on the first all-female Illinois Armed Flight. I encourage every veteran that is eligible to apply for Armed Flight. It is only one day in Washington, D.C., but it is an amazing and unforgettable experience. I am thankful for my military service, as I know it helped me become a Lansing police officer and certainly led me to where I am today. I deeply appreciate our Lansing Honor Guard for all they do, and especially for honoring female veterans on this Veterans Day. Thanks to all of you that came to honor all veterans today. Your Honor, you have someone here speak that represents women veterans. Is she hiding somewhere? We asked for uh, a bio on her 
was shaking her head already because when we received it, it was three pages long. If you can believe everything she's been involved with during her career in the military and now out of the military. So I'm gonna hand this microphone over to her. Thank you everyone for being here this afternoon. It's a privilege to stand before you and represent women veterans. So I am Lieutenant Retired Colonel Hilton from the 330th Medical Brigade, located at Fort Sheridan, Illinois. I retired September 30th, 2022, 33 years of service. So when my president of National Women Veterans United asked me to speak today, I said, ma'am, what do you want me to say? She said, simply, tell them about your experience in the military. Give honor to all women veterans here present today, including the mayor. I would like to thank all our male counterparts. Thank you and thank your families for your service. I stand here before you on the shoulders of many other women. Women who have mentored me through the military and nursing. See, I am a military nurse. I was a nurse the day I joined in 1989. My women's veterans organization is here to support me. I want to thank them, the National Women Veterans United in the Blue Jackets. Thank you, ma'am. My husband is standing there with, me, with them. I thank my family for supporting me for 33 years of military service. I thank all veterans, all families, and anyone that serve our wonderful country. Thank you for your service. I was recognized in 2019 for the National Black Nurses Military Nurse of the Year, and I forgot to thank my family who came to New Orleans with me. So I had to write this down for you guys today. This is a wonderful, wonderful thing that we're doing here in Lansing. We're looking at our veterans. We're remembering the service that they have committed for us. Some of the memories may be sad, but nevertheless, we serve, they serve, and it is an honor. I'd like to say, <laughs> 33 years of service, if I could stay another day, I would. 40 years of my junior, I could no longer low crawl with them. So, here are a few highlights of my service. I enlisted in the Illinois National Guard in 1989. Actually, September the 12th, 1989. I served in the National Guard and the National Guard provided me a wealth of experience and training. I had the opportunity to go on humanitarian missions as a nurse. I went to Cochabamba, Bolivia, La Paz, Bolivia, Quito, Ecuador, Cano, Honduras, Belize, and to the Pentagon in 9-11. I culminated my service in the National Guard in 2003 when I deployed to Fort Campbell, Kentucky for Enduring Freedom. After not being sent to Iraq, a little disappointing, but after leaving Fort Campbell, I returned to Chicago and I accepted a commission. You see, I was a registered nurse, but I was enlisted for 13 years. And when we deployed, they said, ma'am, you're gonna have to do 18 months of deployment. And I said, well, if I'm going to have to stay in another 18 months, I'm going to have to take my commission and leave my job that I had in the National Guard. I love serving other countries as a nurse. At that time in 2003, I went to the 801st Combat Support Hospital located at Fort Sheridan, Illinois. And when I arrived there, I was an ICU nurse. So my duties were to train uh, medical surgical nurses to do ICU duties. You see, in the military, when things happen, we don't know who's going to have to step up next. So that was my job. I trained them at Cook County Hospital on my battle assembly weekends, and it was a very fulfilling job. While being there, 
I was asked to do an additional duty. Again, I raised my hand. I became the company nuclear, biological, chemical warfare officer, and soon the battalion NBC officer, and later on, the higher headquarters detachment commander. See, women can do things in the military to support the fight. I remained in that position until I left in 2003 when I took an assignment at the 330th Medical Brigade as the officer in charge of a Homeland Defense team. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that the Homeland Defense mission is the highlight of my career. We trained for a year for what was called the CSMRF 10.2 mission. CSMRF stands for sea burning, chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear, explosive, consequence, response force. We trained for one year. We traveled to the United States. We trained with the Air Force, the Navy, Marines, FBI, FEMA, and general facilities at the CCP Fort Sam Houston. Those were our Army counterparts. Me and my team, we stayed ready for two years to deploy to defend this country against disasters, man-made, and terrorists and we trained for hurricanes and floods and explosions and chemical attacks and biological attacks. I didn't think I could ever learn enough to serve this country. That was a very fulfilling mission. Fortunately or unfortunately, we did not have to respond at that time. But the training was good for our team, for the women that were involved, and for myself to lead them. Women's Veterans Day celebrations demonstrates the strength, sacrifice, and grit of women that serve in the military. I want you to know that every woman veteran that you know deserves your praise. Humble about their hard-earned accomplishments, but proud to serve. As of 2019, the bill was passed designated June 12th as Women's Veterans Appreciation Day. We should be proud of women who have served. We should honor them. Actually, we honor all veterans who have sacrificed and lived their lives for their country. Today, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for allowing me to speak to you. I encourage you all to serve in some capacity. Before I need to take my space in the back back there, I would like to offer any woman veteran here an opportunity to join the National Women Veterans United. We'll be standing in the back. Thank you, Lansing Memorial Guards, for inviting me. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, hello. Oh, oh, there you are. After all she said, it's unbelievable her career serving in the military. We honor her and our, our, our ranks. And we have here a lady whose husband was in our ranks when we first started in 92. He passed away a few days later at the age of 42, I believe. And she's been an associate member and with us always. Her name is Claudia Cloan. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you can hear me well. The Soldiers of Cycle Award was established in 1994 to recognize a member of the Lansing Memorial Ceremonial, Ceremonial Honor Guard who has stood out during the past year's events. Named in honor of Spec Corps Ernie Cologne, decorated Vietnam vet, a member who died one day after the founding of the Guard in 1992. One second. Yeah, that was my husband that passed. Uh, this year's recipient is a resident of Lansing, Illinois, 
served in the U.S. Navy 1999 to 2004 while serving stateside. Upon seeing our honor guard in action at the Lansing Junior Women's Club Annual Veterans Dinner, decided to enlist in 2019, including in today's event, she has participated in 14 of the past year's events. I'm so proud today, being Women's Day, to honor this lady, this year's recipient of the 2022 Specialist for Ernie Pallone Soldier Disciple Award, to none other than our own Clara Modelo Gonzalez. I am so proud of her. She is always there when you need her, always. I'm sorry, um, I'm reading over a quote, so I sound a little like a Raj from Monsters Inc. Watching, always watching. So I can tell you my niece is a nephew of our babysitting. Um, this is such a huge honor. I totally fell off from you guys. <sighs> yeah, so um, when I was in high school, I wanted to join the, the U.S. Marines. And so it happened that I was a recruiter there, and him and I were talking back and forth with some of my friends. And I guess I was just a little too quick witty for him that he said, you're not going to make it in the Marines. I said, why not? He said, because you, no. I'm like, all right, don't worry. A couple years passed, um, and I still wanted to do something for my country. And so with that being said, I went to the Air Force recruiter, but unfortunately they weren't taking up. A few uh, GED graduates because I didn't graduate from high school and I didn't do a GED. So as I'm leaving, the Navy recruiter he's listening and says, Hey, do you really want to join the military? I said, Yes, I do. Well, come on, we have quota for GED recipients and we'll take you. And so I did it. And I originally wanted to go in as an air traffic controller, but they didn't have anything open. And I ended up going in as a radioman, which then converted into a PT, um, information systems technician. And I progressed really quick when it came to making one. And I was in boot camp, um, my chief, because I always, she said, raise my hand and say, I'll do it. Or even when I'm voluntold and don't want to do it, still do it. I was always readily available for him to be uh, I started as a woman. And I did so well on my studies during boot camp that when I graduated from boot camp, I was a D3. And then in my first duty station in San Diego, uh, I qualified to be able to take the class to become, uh, the test to become a D4. And when I took that test, I passed it with the cover. Then, when I um, checked in, everybody says, how are you already an E4? You just came from boot camp. I don't know. Um, and I took very well at my first duty station that they also, my chief there also um, requested that I qualify to be, to be tested into a se second class petty officer, which was an E5. So by the time I got to my final duty station in Great Lakes, I was already an E5. I just blew everybody over. Um, ultimately, I ended up being in charge of all the Naval Reserve commands, um, all in the mid Midwest area. I had over a thousand um, reserves. It was, it was myself in charge of them and then the lieutenant commander of them. And I really wanted to become a lifer. That was my goal. But sadly, my mother did not want me to re-enlist. My next duty station was going to re-enlist and go to Bahrain. And she begged me not to do it. And I ended up listening to her. And sadly, she passed away. So I'm, you know, up in arms with wanting to be a lifer, and got to spend my time with my mother for final years. So, being in the military is such an honor for me, especially a woman, um, the first in my family. And I always try to inspire anyone who has the opportunity to go just do it once, because there's so much out there that you can learn so between. Being dedicated, you know, our, our Navy, the honor, courage, commitment, you know, just being ready at the helm. 
offers you so much. And if you all ever have a young teenager that you want me to ever speak with, I love doing that, you know, motivating someone. My nephew, we, we convinced him and he just graduated from Air Force boot camp and he's in station in Texas right now. So, yes, um, I definitely like to inspire anyone that I can. And again, thank you, everybody. I'm totally caught off guard. recognizes an individual or organization that demonstrates their commitment to veterans' activities and events. Veterans' organizations such as our Honor Guard are able to exist not only because of the cooperation between ours and other veterans' groups, which we see many in attendance here today, but it is the participation and contributions of individuals and groups from throughout our village and beyond into the region that play a major role in those veterans' organizations' ability to conduct ceremonies such as this. While many individuals and organizations stand out, we chose this year to honor one of Lansing's own, Lynn Cartwright of Linny Q's Restaurants and Bar, right behind you. For those of you who came in, if you're looking for something to eat afterwards, Linny Q's right around the corner. Lynn, can you come up here, please? Lynn's work for the community extends far beyond her restaurant. On any given weekend, on any weekend or during the summer, she can be found around the, the village, the region, oftentimes working with veterans organizations and contributing to the success of their events, including this Honor Guards events held here at this memorial. Lynn makes it a point to personally show up with trays of food, which are greatly appreciated, by the way. And she was among the first to ask, what do you need? What can I do for you? And one of the first to get those things done. So Lynn, for your ongoing dedication and involvement with the Honor Guard as well as other veterans organizations, it is my honor, on behalf of the Lansing Ceremonial Veterans Honor Guard, to recognize you as this year's recipient of our Appreciation Award. Lenny, thank you for all you do for our veterans. I would now like to bring out Deacon Tom Canetto from Our Lady of Knock, Jesus Shepherd and Souls Parish in Calumet City, to provide us with an invocation.
I'm very honored to be here today. Let us put ourselves in the presence of God and ask, Eternal God, we pause to acknowledge the strength of our nation and women veterans who have given faithful service to build our country and to guard the freedom to each of us enjoy. Thank you for the perseverance, tenacity, and courage displayed by women veterans during peacetime and war. Their sacrifices were great. May their legacy of the many women who gave their lives during battle be remembered throughout every generation. God, we pray women veterans everywhere will find sources of consolation to facilitate healing for their visible and invisible wounds. We pray you will provide continuous protection and spiritual strength to the women who are currently serving. As we honor women veterans this day, help us to expand discussion and build momentum to provide and take care and address benefits that are related to the unique needs and issues specific to women veterans. We know that freedom isn't free, and a special few pay the price for many. We owe a debt of gratitude to all the courageous men and women who have served and sacrificed to protect us and our freedom. Today, as we remember our veterans, we ask you to bless each one and meet their very needs. We pray that they will know how valued, respected, and appreciated they are. Please, bless their families for their many sacrifices as well. We ask for your protection over all who are serving now and ask you to bring them home safely. We also ask you to comfort all who are missing someone who served. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. Amen. And God bless America and our men and women veterans. Thank you. Thank you. 